Hi, today I'm gonna kill two birds with a single stone. Um, no real birds, of course. <laughs> I really love birds and I cannot bring myself to harm them. Uh, but I'm gonna show you some nice tips for making an animated video. And then I will show you how I made this beautiful happy birthday balloon in Blender. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but after watching this, if you want me to make one, then let me know in the comments section below. Alright, now let's begin by breaking the video down into its key elements. So the animation starts with a rising balloon that stops in our view having a happy birthday message. The balloon stays there for a while so that the viewer will have enough time to read the message. Next, the balloon rotates to its opposite side and shows a birthday wish. It then rotates again to show a different birthday message and rotates finally to show the last message. Plus, there are lots of small effects such as falling confettis, moving light rays, all included to make the scene look good. Now, quick advice here, when working on a project like this, you need to first come up with a concept and build a prototype to test your concept. As a programmer, I find this useful in my experience building software, and it also works well for my animation projects. For example, in creating this scene of a princess singing, I first began by doing several prototype videos with only a simple model of the girl, which allowed me to focus on the main actions of the character. I also gradually built the design of my assets using simple objects and later replaced them with complex models where necessary. After settling on the key movements and design, I later added all the other complex stuff such as using tips from animation principles, applying cloth and hair simulation, visual effects and color grading. Now there are many times an idea looks great in our head but looks terrible after we build the prototype. For example, this video was a prototype of a section of one of my birthday greeting videos but it didn't feel good for me and so I replaced it with this one. So from the prototype, I quickly realized the concept did not look great as I thought and this saved me a lot of time since I did not begin by doing all the complex stuff. So look, all I'm trying to say is this, first build the concept followed by a prototype and progressively improve your scene where it matters, alright? You want to focus on areas where your viewers and camera will pay attention to. Now there are many ways of prototyping a video such as storyboarding or simply using images and videos that depicts your concept well. My favorite method though is using Blender to build a simple scene. Now you don't have to use only one method, you can mix them up. It largely depends on the project you are working on. Now if you choose to use Blender, it is helpful to review your work using a fast rendering method such as viewport rendering or using a real-time rendering engine such as Eevee. Alright, so let's get started. So I started from this scene file and luckily for me, I had a balloon with a ribbon model from a previous project I worked on. So before I started animating, I thought about the primary motions for the balloon and the ribbon so that I could build a good rig to animate easily and quickly. So as you can see from the final scene file, the balloon first rises with the ribbon and then stops and sways around as if it is fixed on its tail end. Also, if we look closely, we can see that just after the ribbon changes its swaying direction, the balloon rotates slightly in the previous direction for a short period of time before following the new direction. This is an example of a follow through and overlapping action which is one of the 12 animation principles. Now at first glance it may appear tempting to parent the ribbon to the balloon in order for it to follow the balloon's transformation. However, when we rotate the balloon to simulate the swaying action, we can see that both the balloon and ribbon are not quite rotating correctly. The reason is that the rotation is occurring about the center of the balloon where its origin is located and not the tail end of the ribbon. To solve this, we can move the origin of the balloon to the point where the ribbon is fixed. To do this, I set the transform affect only origins and parents on. Next, I move the origin to the tail end of the ribbon and turn off the transform affect only origins and parents. So now the balloon and ribbon are rotating correctly for the swaying action. However, I'm not so comfortable moving the origin of the balloon so far away just to do this. Also, there is no way to rotate the balloon about the point the ribbon is tied to it. 
for the follow through and overlapping action. So I went ahead and changed the rake. This time I printed the balloon to the ribbon, set the ribbon's origin to its tail end, and set the balloon's origin to the point where the ribbon is tied to it. Although this worked quite well, I did not like animating my objects directly and wanted to make use of control rigs. So I created two empties as the control rigs, one for the balloon and the other for the ribbon. I placed the ribbon's empty at the tail end of the ribbon and the balloon's empty at the point the ribbon is tied to it. Next, I printed the ribbon and the balloon to their empties and also printed the balloon's empty to the ribbon's empty. So if I move the ribbon's empty, this moves both the balloon and the ribbon and if I rotate it, this also causes the right swinging motion for my objects. I can also rotate the balloon's empty to animate the follow through and overlapping action. Alright, after completing the rig, I went ahead to animate the primary motions for this scene. I first set up my scene to use a frame rate of 60 fps and set the end frame for the animation duration to 1320 frames. Next, I moved the ribbon's empty to its starting position at frame 0 and then set a keyframe for its location. Next, I went to frame 30 and moved the empty to the origin and set a keyframe for its location. Finally, in the graph editor, I deleted the X and Y location because I am animating only in the Z location. I also changed the interpolation for the key at frame 0 to make the balloon rise faster and come to a stop a bit slowly. I next went ahead to animate the first rotation of the balloon to the opposite side. First, I set a keyframe at frame 300 for the current rotation. I then went ahead to frame 360 and rotated the empty 180 degrees. I then set a keyframe for the rotation. For the second rotation, I set another keyframe at frame 660 and copied the previous rotation key on frame 300 and pasted it at frame 720. For the final rotation, I copied the keyframes on frame 300 and 600 and pasted them at frame 1020. Next, I added the swinging motion to the balloon by adding the noise modifier to the Y direction first in the graph editor. I experimented with different values for the scale and strength and finally settled on 120 and 0.5 respectively. I also wanted the noise modifier to start about midway in the rise, around frame 10, so I went ahead to set the restrict frame range on and change the start value to 10 and the end value to the total animation duration which is 1320 frames. I then increase the blend in value to 225 to smoothen the start of the noise modifier. I went ahead to copy the noise modifier and pasted it on the X rotation. I wanted less rotation in the X rotation, so I increased the scale and decreased the strength. I also changed the phase value to make it different from the noise modifier in the Y rotation. Finally, I copied and pasted the noise modifier to the Z rotation and decreased the strength value. I also changed the phase value. After previewing the animation, I was not happy with the balloon swayed from its center at the same time it rotated to switch to the opposite side. So I decided to modify the end parameter of the noise modifier to end it at frame 310 just a few frames before the first rotation. I also increased the blend out value to gently bring the swinging action to a stop. I also changed the phase value because I wanted a different noise motion for the balloon. To continue with the swaying action after the rotation, I copied and pasted a noise modifier to create a second wand and adjusted the start value to 350 a few frames before the first rotation stops. I then set the end value to 670 a few frames from the start of the second rotation.
I then went ahead to smoothing the beginning and end of the noise modifier by adjusting the blend in and out values. I also experimented with the offset value for a better sway motion that looked good. I went ahead and created two more noise modifiers, giving me a total of four noise modifiers as can be seen here. After that, I tested the animation again, and this time I was quite satisfied with the rotation of the balloon. Next, I went ahead to add some design improvements to the scene. So I created two textures, one for the front side of the balloon and the other for the back side. I also created a black and white max for these images because I wanted the white areas in the texture to have a metallic shader. Next, I created a shader for the balloon material and made it shiny by decreasing the roughness value. Next, I duplicated the shader to create a new one and increase its metallic parameter and decrease the roughness value to make it shiny. Next, I created a mix shader and connected the first shader to the first input and the second shader to the second input and finally connected the output to the material output node. Next, I created a texture node using the front image for the balloon. I then added a mapping and texture coordinate node and adjusted the values for the mapping node to align the texture correctly to the balloon. Finally, I connected it to the base color input for the two shaders I created earlier. Next, I created another texture node using the black and white front image for the balloon and connected the mapping and texture coordinates nodes for the first texture to it. Finally, I used the black and white image as my factor input to the mix shader. So the white part of the image which includes the text and the borderline will use the metallic shader. Next, I moved to frame 400 so that I can see the back of the balloon after its first rotation. Next, I added a new material to the balloon based on the previous one and made it unique. I then selected all the faces on the back of the balloon and assign the new material to it. Finally, I changed the texture to the images for the back of the balloon and adjusted the mapping coordinate to mirror the texture placement and make it readable. Next, I positioned the default camera to face the balloon after it rises. Next, I added two lights to the scene. I added a key light followed by a fill light. Next, I went ahead to create two background shaders. The first shader was connected to an environment texture node with an HDRI image. I set up the mapping for this as shown here. Then I went ahead and added a noise texture and set up the mapping. I connected the noise texture to a color ramp using a blue and purple color for the color stops. I also reduced the saturation from 1 to 0.98 using the hue and saturation node. Next, I used the is camera ray output for a light path node as the factor of the mix shader, which enabled me use the HDRI background shader to contribute to the lighting of my scene only and the noise texture background shader for the background display. So finally, I was ready for my prototype render. I enabled Bloom and Motion Blur for my render settings. Alright, so this was the result. Obviously, this needs a lot of enhancements to make it look good. But at this stage, we want to ensure that we are okay with the main concept before we move ahead to improve things. Thanks for watching and check out the second part of this video where I show you how I added further enhancements to the prototype, including the use of animation principles. Don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe to my channel and please leave a comment below.